everybody, welcome to this month's Myth of the Month. This month we're going to be looking at creatures from folklore and legend. Tales of mythical creatures are told all around the globe. Some of these creatures are large, scary, and eat people. Some are more whimsical, and others just like to pull pranks on unsuspecting humans. Today we're going to look at several strange and wonderful creatures from mythology and legend around the world. The Sphinx is a mythical being from both Egyptian and Greek mythology. This creature has the body of a lion and the head of a female human. In Greek legends, she also has wings. Whenever anyone approached the Sphinx, she would demand the answer to a riddle. What has one voice and yet becomes four-footed and two-footed and three-footed? Anyone who was unable to answer correctly was eaten on the spot. Do you know the answer to her riddle? Just in case you should ever need it, here's the answer. Man. He crawls on all fours as a baby, then walks on two feet as an adult, then uses a walking stick in old age. What happens after someone answers this riddle correctly depends on the story. In some, she deems the person worthy of passing by unharmed. In others, she meets her end either by losing a fight with the one who answered the riddle or by falling off her high rock perch. In other Egyptian tales, she is also the guardian of sacred places, only allowing those with worthy hearts to pass through. Another creature that requires cunning to defeat is the Minotaur from Greek mythology. The Minotaur is a terrifying creature that is part human and part bull. He was so terrifying, a huge maze-like structure called a labyrinth was built to contain him. This labyrinth was so elaborate that the Minotaur couldn't get out, and anyone who was unlucky enough to go in would likely never come out again. The labyrinth was located in Crete, which was ruled over by King Minos. During a series of games and contests, participants from Athens became very angry that Minos' son kept beating them in every single contest and took his life. As a peace offering, Athens sent 14 people every several years to Crete to send into the Minotaur's labyrinth. None of them were ever seen again. The third time Athens sent people to the labyrinth, A hero named Theseus volunteered to go, planning to face and fight the Minotaur himself. King Minos' daughter fell in love with Theseus and wanted to help. She went to the architect of the labyrinth and asked him for its secrets. At his suggestion, she gave Theseus a ball of string to help him navigate the maze. Theseus tied the end of the thread to the entrance and made his way inside, letting the string unroll behind him. When he got to the center, he found the Minotaur. He battled the creature and won, putting an end to the sacrifices. He then followed the string to make his way safely back out, ending the Minotaur's reign of terror. Next is the winged horse Pegasus, also from Greek mythology. Pegasus was born when the hero Perseus defeated the Gorgon Medusa. Pegasus was quite powerful, able to create streams of water wherever he struck his hoof. He even created a spring for the muses when theirs ran dry. A mortal named Bellepharon, with help from the goddess Athena, tamed Pegasus. He made a name for himself by slaying many terrible monsters and one day decided that he deserved to live with the gods on Mount Olympus. He hopped on Pegasus and began the flight. When Zeus noticed this, he was furious and sent a fly to bother Pegasus. Pegasus startled when the fly bit him, accidentally tossing his rider, who was never seen again. Eventually, Pegasus did end up at Mount Olympus. He was given the task of pulling the chariot that held Zeus's thunderbolts, and Zeus gave Pegasus his own constellation, which you can still see in the sky to this day. Another horse-like creature is the Kelpie from Scottish folklore. These water spirits usually take the form of a horse or pony, complete with a saddle and bridle, and are found near rivers. They can also shapeshift into human form, although, according to some stories, they may keep their hooves instead of having feet. When in their horse form, A kelpie can be identified by its constantly dripping wet mane. Kelpies do eat people. They lure in their prey by enticing them to sit on their back. For a weary traveler, a lone horse ready to ride is very tempting. When the person climbs onto the kelpie's back, they suddenly realize that they're stuck to the horse and can't dismount. The kelpie will then charge underwater, taking the person with them. Kelpies can smack the surface of water with their tail and make a sound like thunder. They can also summon a flood to sweep people into the water. Kelpies do have one weakness, their bridles. If you are able to get a hold of one, 
they have no choice but to obey your commands. A Kelpie's bridle will work on other beasts as well, including other Kelpies. This can be useful since a Kelpie is as strong as 10 normal horses and has even more stamina. Another terrifying man-eating creature is the manticore from Persian mythology. These sneaky creatures have the head of a man with a long beard, the body of a lion, and the tail of a scorpion. They have blue or gray eyes and look just like an ordinary man until you get too close and see their three rows of sharp teeth. They have crimson red fur and in some versions, dragon-like wings. They can't speak, instead having a voice that sounds like a trumpet. It is said that hearing music is a sign that a manticore is near. They can eat any animal in the jungle, except for elephants. No one is really sure why. Their favorite thing to eat, though, is people. They will wait in tall grass so only their human-like head can be seen. They will often wait for groups of people to pass by, then attack. They eat people whole, including clothes and anything they might be carrying, so there is no trace left. It is impossible to run from a manticore once it has its sights on something. It has incredible speed, sharp claws, and poisonous stingers on its tail. These stingers can be launched like arrows and are immediately replaced, so if they miss, there's another stinger ready to go and try again. These stingers cause whatever they hit to freeze up, allowing the manticore to catch up. Think someone can fight off a manticore? Nope. Their fur is impenetrable, and the only possible weak spot might be their mouth. But even if you were able to defeat a manticore this way, it would just regenerate immediately. However, there is one way to make sure a manticore is a less fearsome hunter. If someone is able to find a manticore cub before its scorpion-like tail is fully formed, they can stomp on the end so that the tail can never grow the poisonous stingers. Kitsune are fox spirits from Japanese mythology. They look very much like regular foxes, except they have multiple tails. They can have as many as nine. The more tails a kitsune has, the older and more powerful it is. When they earn their ninth tail, their fur becomes white or gold. When a kitsune reaches 100 years of age, they gain the ability to shapeshift. They do like to transform into humans, but sometimes keep their tails when they transform, which they try to keep hidden. The oldest and most powerful kitsune can take any shape they please, such as an impossibly tall tree, or another moon in the sky, or take no shape at all and just disappear. Kitsune fear and hate dogs, so when confronted with one, they may turn back into a fox and run away. Kitsune have psychic powers and are able to take over people's bodies. Usually, they will do this to teach a lesson to someone who is wrong to them. They might make them give away all their money, eat way too much, or run through town without any clothes. They can also use this ability to deliver messages in dreams. There are two types of kitsune. The good ones are known as Zenko or Inari foxes. They serve Inari, the goddess of rice and prosperity. They will share their wisdom with humans and are known to guard households and families. The bad ones are known as Yako. These kitsune are more destructive, known for ruining people's reputations and luring people into traps. They mostly target people who are arrogant or lazy, but they have been known to bother innocent people as well. Finally, here's a creature from American folklore, the jackalope. The jackalope is a jackrabbit with the antlers of a deer or an antelope. Stories say they can be found in the western United States, most commonly in Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, and New Mexico. They are larger than a normal rabbit and can be very defensive. If hunters approach them, they prefer to face them head-on, charging and attacking with their sharp horns. In the old days, Hunters brave enough to go looking for a jackalope were advised to wear stovepipes over their legs to protect themselves. They don't always have to fight, though. Jackalopes are incredibly fast, known to run at least 90 miles per hour. When running away, all you can see is the trail of dust they leave behind. Jackalopes can understand and mimic human speech. One of their favorite pranks was to sit near a cowboy's campfire and echo their songs back to them. A creepy thing to hear under the dark night sky. Thank you for joining us for this month's Smith of the Month, and we will see you next time.